It is time for the second part in the Vintage Motherboard Hall series, and in this video, a Chaintech 6 SSA 2. Alright, so here we have the board. This is a Chaintech 6 SSA 2. It is a slot 1 motherboard in the micro ATX form factor using the SIS 5600 chipset. As we can see, we have a slot 1 for the CPU cartridge. This will take a Pentium 2 or Pentium 3. On paper, this should only allow uh, use of the Pentium 2, uh, all of them, and the Pentium 3 Ketmai. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I do not have a Pentium 3 Ketmai. I only have a copper mine here, which is a 750, which we will try. So, uh, yeah, we can see what uh, what's going on there. I believe the non-Intel boards with the non-Intel chipsets are a little bit less uh, finicky when it comes to CPU support in uh, in practice. It just won't have the microcode. The only thing we're really after is to see if the board works or not. So in terms of other options on the board, we have three RAM slots for, of course, single data rate memory, 66 or 100 megahertz respectively. We have two IDE channels, a floppy channel, a front panel header, that actually has the layout printed on the uh, on the mask there, which is very very nice. Going down the board, we have a fan header. We have a little peg here in case your motherboard does not have a uh, standoff in this general area. You can use this to uh, put it into your case and not short anything out when putting in uh, heavy ISA cards, because this is still a motherboard that has ATP and three PCI slots and an ISA slot. This ISA and PCI slot combo here is sharing one slot on your uh, actual case. Because ISA cards are inverted, they will sit in the same slot. So that should work very nicely. The BIOS chip is over here. It is, I believe, an award type of deal. BIOS revision that was original on this board is from 1999. So we'll see uh, whether or not we can actually make it post. And that is pretty much all there is to show here. The uh, sound chip is an ESS Solo 1, I believe. Let's see if we can get that in the picture a bit better. Yep, ESS Solo 1, ES1938S. Should support wavetable audio. We'll find that out the hard way, I suppose. If you take a look at the rear I.O., Again, we have pretty standard PC-98 layout here. We have PS2 ports, dual USB, parallel serial serial, game port, MIDI out, and onboard audio. Again, powered by the ESS Solo 1. So yeah, I guess we can get our uh, testing setup that's quite convoluted at the moment. Uh, put everything on and see what happens. Okay, for this part, I actually decided to uh, just go ahead and film the entire process so we can have some fun together. Again, here we have our Pentium 3 CPU. And there we go, push it down. Connect the fan like so. In this case, we have no onboard video, so we'll use our trusty NVIDIA Riva TNT2 Model 64 once again. Might as well put the Realtek network card in. I mean, we're going to introduce a hell of a lot of uh, variables when it's not going to post, but you know, I'll actually live dangerously. Let's see, these RAM slots are ever so slightly finicky. There you go. Nice and crunchy there. But I can assure you, nothing broke. It's just the way aging plastic is. We're not going to be hooking up the drives just yet, so no IDE. We will need power for the motherboard and our processor, which is of course uh, on this platform still 5, five volt only. And it does not need supplemental power for our, uh, like the Pentium 4s and Athlon 64s do. So, there we are. We should now turn on the power supply. And the board powers up. 
No post so far. A few moments later. Six and a half hours later. All right, let's go through the troubleshooting steps. I, let's, for instance, remove a stick of memory. Make sure it's reseated. Yep, let's seat it properly. We'll switch out the AGP graphics card for a PCI-1. I have an S3 Verge on hand. Because the BIOS might not actually default to using the AGP graphics card. So it might not actually even do anything. Okay. New attempt. We have one stick of memory and a PCI video card. So far, not much is happening. Okay. In that case, let's remove our network card. Boot as minimally as we possibly can. So I can sense the board is not sitting properly on a box at the moment. There we go. Try again. Everything does appear to power up correctly, it's just that it's not actually going through the post. Alright, still no post. Alright, well it's not okay, but you know. Pressing down the CPU once again. It was actually, it looked like it wasn't seated properly, so could have been my bad. Yep, that was it. Good. Results it is reporting as a Pentium 3 at 500 megahertz. And we should have 64 megabytes of RAM. And we do. Okay. And we have Award BIOS. And here we indeed have an Award BIOS. It is 1998. I'm going to guess it is not a newest CPU or a new, newest BIOS version that uh, we can possibly use in here. Ha! <laughs> That's a nice play on words. CPU and chipset CPU or setup. You can see that CPU. That's nice. All right. Let's see if we can make this run faster. It's detected as a two two thirty three. Yeah, I don't think it'll actually go any higher. This is a seven fifty. So ah, here we go. User defined. We have a one hundred megahertz CPU. And we have a 7x, or 5x rather, multiplier. We have a caster latency of 2. Uh, I'm not sure what that does. That's not a problem. Okay. Let's not change too much here, otherwise we don't know what we've done before. We're going to go with PMP OS, yes or no, or go yes, because we'll just hook up Windows 98 again and see it crash. And just see if it will post at 750 megahertz. And then we'll also see if it can complete post again, and then see if it complains about the microcode. Because if it doesn't, then we can just use any Pentium 3 CPU in this motherboard. And indeed, we have 750 megahertz. Very nice. This board shouldn't even support copper mine CPUs. Doesn't seem to care. Floppy disk fill, yep, we don't have one at the moment. BIOS is from the 16th of April 1999. Continue. Yep, no complaints about the microcode, it just doesn't boot, which makes sense. Okay. We'll turn it off again. 
we'll install the second stick of memory because we will need it. And we'll also hook up the IDE channels and see if we can get into Windows. There we go, Windows 98. This is the exact same install as we used on the K7T. So, it might boot, it might not. We're about to find out. As we have an SIS chipset, we don't have drivers for it. Uh, we don't have them installed, at least. Nor do we have drivers for the onboard audio, but we'll see what Windows can detect. It should be able to pick up the graphics card or the video card because uh, we've used it previously. Okay, we just went through all of the drivers and uh, updated a few of them to make everything working. The only thing that doesn't work at the moment is the uh, NVIDIA graphics card. Drivers just refuse to load. Might be an incompatibility with the Sys chipset. That's just one of those things that uh, happens every now and again. Or maybe it's because we're reusing the uh, same Windows install. So yeah, I guess we just have to pay for laziness. Because as you can see, we have no video driver. But, no worries. We don't really need it that much. Because we're not going to do any 3D tests as such. Everything else appears fine, so we'll just go with that. Okay, so here we have Microsoft Windows 98. Suddenly the internal disks are now removable. Very interesting. Let's open up CPU Z so we can see uh, what it's detecting. There we go. Intel Pentium 3 E Copper Mine. 750 megahertz onslaught one SECC2 running at its full clock speed on a board that should not support this CPU at all. We have our chain tech SIS motherboard, 120 megs of RAM, and the Palette Marxism NV5 like before. Alright, so this we can actually put up against something. Let's go up against the 1 gigahertz via Eden. See what it can do. If it can do anything at all. I haven't tried loading this system. Ah, there we go. A 750 copper mine is just as fast as a via Eden 1 gigahertz and it has more than twice the FPU. All right, good to know. So that's working nicely. Let's go into our DOS benchmarking suite. Let's go for the 3D Bench 1.0 C by Chris's 3D Bench. Or not? Nope, that was a hard lock up. You know what? I'm just going to swap video cards because uh, I've had enough of this uh, NVIDIA Tantrum uh, 264 at the moment. Alright, so we switched out the TNT2 Model 64 for a trusty old S3 Verge. This is the Diamond Stealth 3D2000 Pro with 4 megabytes of VRAM. Just install the driver in the background, so let's see what happens, shall we? This has always, uh, have, has always been my backup card. Very reliable uh, card. It's a 3D decelerator, but we only need 2D anyway for uh, our testing purposes for today. Let's move over here again. We can see that we are going through post. I guess that the NT2 really doesn't like the particular AGP implementation on this board. I did install the SIS specific AGP driver. Didn't make a difference. So we'll just deal with that by swapping it out. 
Ah, the fuzzy look of an S3 graphics card. Very nice. Okay, so... Let's wait for the CD drive to initialize. Let's go ahead and try this one more time, assuming that the video card was the problem. Yep, it sure was. There we go, 101.5 frames per second. Let's go to Chris's 3D bench at 640, 480. Because that's the interesting resolution for these faster chips. The only 3D benchmark for our 3D decelerator. Alright, 134.7 score, that's 80 FPS, good. And the PC player as well. Appears to hold its own. I remember running this on my Pentium Overdrive 486 system and that's really struggling along. But this looks fine. Just a couple more seconds to go. 39.5 FPS. Yep. Looks smooth. So that's good enough. Okay, let's go for Doom next at the maximum detail settings. Again, seeing uh, a lot of disk activity. I'm not sure if this uh, CD-ROM actually supports uh, DMA, or this ID controller rather, but it should have been enabled to install the SIS IDE driver and enable DMA, so. It's definitely not as smooth as it was with the uh, Athlon Thunderbird that was just pulling along in a matter of seconds. This is actually closer to 30 FPS than I would have guessed because it looks real time. Which would be interesting. because this isn't actually miles off the Pentium Overdrive. Right, 2134 game ticks and 2005 real ticks. So that's what we know. Let's go through the QuakeTime demo. This time I won't be so foolish to try the 644A. Well, I'm gonna try it, I guess, but... First let's do the regular one, 320-200. The Necropolis. Yeah, this is looking more in line. Something's wrong with Doom, because this is what I would expect from this system, doing a software rendering job. Yeah, that's 66.1 FPS. That's more or less in line with what I would expect. So that makes this a perfect candidate for uh, DOS gaming, assuming that we can get uh, Doom to play ball, but I guess 30 FPS in Doom is fine because that's its engine limitation anyway, close to it. Let's try the 640480. Last time it wouldn't load. Let's see if this system is different. It would appear so. Yep. It's not going to be smooth, I don't think, but at least it's running. And it looks really nice at this resolution. So at least the uh, S3 Verge and Pentium 3750 combo is pulling this off. It's not going to be 30 FPS though, I don't think. Maybe just slightly over, but it's 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 frame dipping like crazy. But we'll see in uh, a little bit. There we go. Splash and done. 27 FPS. Okay. So if you want a uh, full 60 FPS experience in the latest DOS games and I suppose what you should be looking at is something faster than a Pentium 3 750 perhaps uh, something a little bit more uh, something like an Athlon uh, perhaps 
that's a bit faster. Let's try Duke 3D. We'll have to set it up for this particular sound card because it has a different layout. We should be able to use the Sound Blaster because that's what it's set up. And it's going to be at address 240 from what I've seen in the boot up screen. I believe it emulates Sound Blaster uh, Pro, so we'll leave it there. I believe the DOS emulation is interrupt 7. Don't know where the 16-bit DMA is at. We'll just have to test a few things. 16-bit mixing, stereo, 22 kilohertz. Let's test the general MIDI first. Not hearing anything. Perhaps at 300. Oh, it's not there. It could be at... Oh, it's not there either. Well, if not at 330, then I don't know where it would be. It's not producing any sound whatsoever. Okay, let's set this to Sound Blaster and see if it does a FAM emulation. Yep, it does. Yep, that sounds about right. We'll have to see if we can get sound to work. Because I don't know exactly at which interrupt this card is going to be. It should be at like 515, that's usually the combination. Yep, that works, okay. Yep, it was at 5. Okay, that's good. That means we should be able to launch Duke Nukem 3D. This is set up for 800 by 600 resolution, so it should really struggle. And it does. Go to LA Meltdown, Hollywood Holocaust. Well, I will say, this was definitely smoother on the Athlon, but the Athlon couldn't do a, a solid 30 FPS in all situations either, so. Yep, this is fine. I believe that in the past I had some comments on how I got Duke Nukem 3D to run on a Coppermine CPU because they are supposedly incompatible. Well, I don't know, I've always played this on Pentium 3s and it's never been an issue at all. Oh well. There we go. This appears to work just fine. So the only issue we really had on this motherboard was the uh, TNT2 that wouldn't play ball with the SIS AGP chipset. Which is fine. Everything else worked absolutely fine, so... That's uh, very satisfying to me. So, second board down. The Chaintech uh, board has completed its testing and it appears stable and working just fine. Despite running a CPU that it should not support. That's a win in my book. Hope you enjoyed this video, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part of this series, or any other video for that matter, and uh, I hope you have a nice day.